are gathered here in the sight of God and of his church to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy marriage. This is an honorable estate which God himself has instituted and blessed, and by which he gives us a picture of the very communion of Christ and his bride, the church. God has both established and sanctified marriage, and has promised to bless therein all who love and trust in him, and who seek to give him their faithful worship and service for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will, for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into inadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. We hear the word of the Lord from Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whenever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. St. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church, and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of water through the word and present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. But I'm talking about Christ in the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. From Matthew chapter 19, Jesus replied to the Pharisees, Have you not read that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. This is the word of the Lord. We now sing... Hymn number 862, O oh, Bless This House.
at the beginning, the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. And the book of Genesis records that beautiful account of the creation of the world. It also records the beginning of the human race, and the beginning of the family, the beginning of marriage. After the Lord had created all things, after he had finished creation, and he created man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, man became a living soul, and when the Lord was all finished, he said, it is good. It is very good. But just a few verses later, we hear the Lord says, it is not good that man should be alone. There was part of his creation that still needed to be completed yet. And we remember how that account happened and how God took Adam and had him review all the animals. They all came past him. And he named them all. And while he was naming them all, he was seeing if there was any of them that would be a help me for him, a wife for him. And Adam kept shaking his head, no, that's a rhinoceros, no, that won't work, no, 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 that giraffe, no, that's not the one, no, and so on. And all the animals, and then the Lord had Adam fall into a deep sleep. And while he slept, he took one of his roots. And then he closed up that place with, again, and healed it. And then from that rib, he made a woman. And when Adam woke up, he said, yes, this one, she's the one. She was made from my rib. She's bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she is taken out of man. We see that Creator did an awesome thing by creating man for woman and woman for man. And he did an awesome thing by bringing the two of you together, too, in love. We, uh, today, we've come to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman. We're all here because we want to witness it, but we want to bless it, too. We want to say, you two are blessed. And we know that we can't bless the very church. As Jesus gave his life for his bride. So, Sean, you are one or to protect and care for your wife. Even as Christ does the church. And how the church willingly serves her husband. That's the picture that Jesus gives us today. And then he closes by saying, What God has joined you, given to you from the Lord love. In his name. We now declare our intent before God and these witnesses. Sean Lowell Kleckner, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live with her in holy marriage according to the word of God? Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others, be husband to her, as long as you both shall live, if so, answer, I will. And Mr. Sianta Wheelie, will you have this man to be your husband, to live with him in holy marriage according to the word of God? Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, obey him, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be wife to him, as long as you both shall live, if so, answer, Give them your hand at the Lord's altar. Sean, 
in the presence of God and these witnesses take you, Fenster, to be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish until death parts us. And I pledge you my faithfulness. I minister in the presence of God and these witnesses. Take you, Sean, to be my husband. To have and hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death parts us. And I pledge you my faithfulness. Receive this ring as a pledge and token. Receive this ring as a pledge and token of wedded love and faithfulness. Grant your blessing, O Lord, to your servants, Fenister and Sean, that they may be ever mindful of their solemn pledge and trusting in your mercy, abound evermore in love all their days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now that Fenister and Sean have consented together in holy marriage and have given themselves to each other by their solemn pledges and have declared the same before God and these witnesses, I pronounce them to be husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. The Almighty and gracious God, abundantly grant you his favor and sanctify and bless you with the blessing given our first parents in paradise that you may please him in both body and soul and live together in holy love until your life's end. Amen. We will now sing the next hymn number 537 Beautiful scene.
strengthen them in faithfulness and love for each other, sustain and defend them in all trial and temptation, help them to live in faith toward you, in the communion of your holy church, and in loving service to each other, that they may ever enjoy your heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you Mr. and Mrs. Sean Fleckner. <laughs>